just picked up this drive here for quite cheap. I think it was about 220 Canadian dollars, which is about uh, 160 USD. It's a four terabyte drive from Team Group. Uh, it's a more budget brand, but I've used this uh, MP34 before in the past. I've had a two terabyte one, and actually I had a one terabyte one, and they both performed very well, to be honest. So, okay, so here's the drive here, dual sided. Um, and again, this is a DRAM drive. So it's t apparently, according to at least the specs, it's TLC and has DRAM. So. Um, the fact that it has dual sided chips, unlike the P3 Plus, the Crucial P3 Plus, this one here apparently has a DRAM and TLC. And here's a look at some transfers. So we can see here that we were getting, uh, as advertised, you know, 3,700, 2,800 writes and reads, uh, pretty much just standard high end Gen 3 drive. So that's pretty much as fast as you're going to get out of a Gen 3 drive. Auto benchmark, same thing, you know, all the uh, sector sizes, just a little drop down there. But whatever, basically, it's as expected there. And you can see here that the writes are quite consistent across the board. I'm doing some pretty long writes here with very, very large data files. And you can see here that in general, it's not really dropping down that much. We're actually maintaining um, several gigabyte transfer speeds here. And this is with the drive fairly empty, I would say, around maybe 20% or so. And you can see here that basically through this whole transfer, we were consistent across the board, uh, maintaining pretty good speeds the whole way. And I'll just jump in here and do another one, just you know, basically blast it again, because sometimes you'll... Ex sometimes you'll deplete the cache and it will start to drop down, but we're not seeing that here. It's able to just consistently maintain good speeds with these large file transfers. Then you can see here I'm doing a comparison to the Crucial P3 Plus, which is technically a fast drive, I guess, for, for reads. However, once you start to do writes, it does drop down pretty rapidly, and then it ends up hitting a point where once you ex once you deplete that cache, it basically just drops off to nothingness. So you can see here I'm doing some writes, and uh, you know it's going totally fine, and then all of a sudden it drops down to zero bytes per second. So we're basically getting no performance whatsoever. And it'll actually sit here and hang up for quite a bit of time. Then it will clear the cache, jump back up, and then immediately drop down. I noticed this when I used the P3 Plus that it would take me hours to transfer data because the initial burst is fine. You know, if you're just doing maybe you know a 15 or 20 gigabyte file, that's it. But as soon as you start to do like even a full game transfer, you know, 130 gigabytes, some of these larger games or multiple files, the drive essentially becomes unusable where it drops down to zero bytes per second. OK, now we're jumping forward to the team group being significantly more full here. You can see we're probably around 60 or 70 percent of being full. And I'm doing some more auto benchmark here and you can see it, it's around the same. I mean, it may have dropped down slightly, but we're still looking at, you know, multiple gigabyte per second performance. It's obviously not going to perform as well as a totally empty drive, but it's doing quite fine overall. And you can see here, despite the fact that the drive is quite full, I'm doing some moves over here, uh, and it's quite consistent. Even in real-world file usage, you can see here that we're looking at you know, hundreds of megabytes a second being moved, despite the fact that the drive is getting pretty full here. So not only in synthetic benchmarks does this drive perform well, it actually performs very, very well in real-world file transfers, whether it's empty or full.